Hello and welcome to another Science Man digital lesson. Today we're out here on a gorgeous day to measure the impulse of some rocket engines. Now, if you know anything about model rocketry, you might know that they make different sizes of engines. I've got a D engine here and it puts out quite a bit of force for quite a bit of time. This is a C engine and in my bracket here I have a B engine attached to a force sensor. That force sensor is attached to a mobile data collection unit. So I'm going to use that to collect the data when this rocket fires. So without further ado, let's go ahead and fire this rocket. Perfect. Now let's try a C engine. Okay, we're all set for a C engine. Let's give that a try. Wow, that's a lot more force for more period of time. Now, let's see how a D engine compares to that. Okay, buckle your seat belts, we're ready to fire a D engine. Wow, okay, that's a B, C, and D engine. Let's take those back, that data back into the uh, computer and uh, see if we can compare the impulse generated by those engines. Okay, we're back at the computer and we've got our rocket engine data downloaded. And if you take a look from left to right, we've got our B, our C, and our D rocket engines. And they have some very interesting data. The first thing that really um, jumps out is that the peak force uh, is successively higher for each type of engine. And one thing that's really obvious is that we have a, uh, a fairly short burn time for the uh, the first engine and the uh, the second engine uh, goes on for a little bit longer. The, um, the D engine runs about the same as the uh, C engine but at a, at a much higher force level and it's interesting this amount of data, this uh, D engine caused a, a kind of a harmonic resonance here as it was burning and I believe that's because uh, the rocket was so powerful it was making the the small lab stand vibrate back and forth as the rocket engine was burning. Now we have really nice uh, force versus time graphs here. Now what can we do with that in order to calculate impulse? Well it just so happens that the that's the exact data we need because the formula for impulse and really impulse is the change in momentum or the amount of momenta imparted to an object when you apply a force over a period of time. So as we see this formula here the change in momentum is equal to the force multiplied by the time that the force is applied. So if we go back to our data what we really need to do is since these are graphs of force versus time and we need to multiply force times time. The perfect thing to do here would be to calculate the area under the graph. So that's what we'll do. We'll calculate the area right under this graph and if we look very closely here we can see that the computer has calculated it for us and it says the area is 4.6 newton seconds. 4.6 newton seconds. So let's do it for the rest of the rocket engine. Let's do it for the C and the area there is 9.5 newton seconds and we'll do the sum area underneath for the D engine and we get 18.5. Wow! So as we compare these three rocket engines we got 4.6 newton seconds of impulse from the B, 9.5 from the C, and 18.5 from the D. Now what's interesting about these uh, rocket engines is that they often come with a chart telling you how much impulse you should get uh, and it's in, in the package and as we see here now there's some variants here because they, they uh, design these rocket engines to do th uh, certain things. Sometimes engines are designed to be part of multi-stage rockets. But as you can see, a B engine is supposed to deliver about 5 newton seconds of impulse. And a C engine is supposed to deliver about 10. And a D engine 
is supposed to deliver about 20. 5, 10, and 20 is very close to our values that we got experimentally, which was 4.6, 9.5, and 18.5. So if you're studying impulse, and uh, you've got some rocket engines handy, I suggest you uh, grab those engines, go outside, and uh, try this experiment for yourself. Thanks for joining me for another Science Man digital lesson.